In the pristine waters of Flinders Bay near Augusta in WA, the seabed is being transformed. In a world first, hatchery bred abalone are being grown out here on artificial reefs. Brad Adams is a former wild catch abalone diver and marine scientist. He has developed the world's first abalone sea ranch and will soon be exporting his ocean grown product to the world. Roger mate, ready to go. With the, with the sea ranching is to just basically build your own reefs in an area where abalone would thrive naturally and the food's there, uh, the environmental conditions are fantastic, it's pristine waters and they just grow naturally without any intervention from us. Generally when you're building a farm on land you need to buy, purchase the land on which is generally coastal and it's quite expensive. Um, you've always got pumps running, you've got like big power inputs, you've got big labour inputs, then you've also got to feed them a, a pellet, whereas basically once we've um, paid for that capital cost of building our reefs, there's really just the input of the abalone each year and some labour to um, harvest and seed, position those abalone and there's really not much else to do. Brad Adams' father, Terry, pioneered the wild caught abalone industry at Augusta in the late 1960s, and two of his brothers are still licence holders. Four years ago on Landline, Brad Adams was experimenting with a range of artificial reef designs for growing abalone. His dream of sea ranching was still just that a dream. Well, it really started with um, when I was a wild catch diver. I was seeing lots of areas out there where everything was right. The, um, the oceanic environment was right, the seagrass beds, there was good food there. And whenever you found a rock, it would be loaded with abs. And over time, with sort of the association with, well, why not just put a rock down there, put an ab on it, and see what happens. And, you know, um, that's how this sort of business evolved. Yeah, it was a pretty... Uh, on process. Um, took us a good three years of research there to work out the, the right sort of shape that would, would work, not just from a um, biological perspective, but also from a management perspective, where you know you're able to control the stock going in and control it going out and being able to harvest properly and not having them block up with too much seaweed. So it took a lot of trial and error to get the right design. The right design was what he calls an habitat, a play on the words abalone and habitat. It's a 900 kilogram concrete block designed to support up to 400 abalone each and become part of the marine environment. Augusta's new $36 million marina built with profits from the mining and gas industries as part of the state royalties for regions policy has been crucial for getting the project up and running. Before this marina was completed we were trying to load those concrete blocks um, off a boat ramp where there was swell and wind and it was, was quite hard to do and um, slow and time consuming. And it's just been fantastic to, for us to be able to work out of here have safe anchorage for our vessels. We actually, um, in the time that the marina was getting built, two of my vessels broke their moorings and ended up on the beach and with some damage. So um, to have this facility here is so crucial to our business. We've put over 5,000 of them in the water now. And um, yes, over 12 kilometres of reef if you put them side by side on the, on the lease area here in Flinders Bay. So 18 months ago we started um, seeding our reefs that we've been building. Uh, the first year we put 400,000 abalone out, the second year another 1.1 million. Uh, this year we'll do another uh, 1.1 million again to, to completely stock the farm. Roger that. What's the visibility like? Yeah, visibility. Yeah, it's pretty good, I'd say. Uh, 
Mark Wall is a dive master and Ocean Grown Abalone's farm manager. So we deploy the abs in a actually a modified oyster basket. Um, they got a top and bottom lid. Each basket contains 200 abs in it, and we strap two of those using shock cord and a stick to each habitat. So you get 400 per habitat. And in one deployment, we'll do seven lots of 44 baskets. I think it's 352 baskets all up. What we've done is mark a boy uh, all the habitats into what we call reefs. And so we have a numbering system starting on each line and then it runs sequentially. So we've essentially got a grid system underwater where we can track exactly where abalone are that we've deployed, harvested or even mortality rates. Survival rates on the oldest habitats have averaged about 80% and the marine snails have thrived on an abundant range of seaweed. When we did, do initially seed them though, you see quite a large fallout. At the moment we're unsure entirely what that is but we're looking into it. A lot of it we think is to walk off and then also predation because they're quite weak at that point in time and uh, predators easily get them off the, off the habitats. Biosecurity is strictly controlled to avoid any risk of disease on the lease. The Department of Fisheries closely monitors the farm's environmental management plan key biosecurity elements that we look at is making sure that disease isn't introduced into the area and we do that with, with checks with our fish health people and um, also to make sure that disease doesn't develop on site and the way we do that is to limit the density that the operator is allowed to use and that minimises the stress on the animals. Juvenile abalone are all quarantined at the hatchery farm at Bremer Bay on the south coast before being transferred to Augusta. Well, biosecurity is absolutely important to us. It's vital to the integrity of our business because we depend on a secure, steady supply of juveniles coming through from that hatchery to, place, to, to base our business on. The abalone are of a known health history for the whole 18 months that they're cultured from um, when they're first born to when they're 40 millimetres, which is what we put them out, out at. Then they actually go into a biosecure area for two weeks um, where the incoming water is completely filtered down to 0.5 micron um, so that we know that there's no chance of any disease coming in or anything from the, from the, from the wild, which is where your, any transmission vectors will come from. Um, and once they're given health clearance from the um, Department of Fisheries, they come over here, they put in the water here, and um, they're under the same uh, environmental conditions as abalone in the bay, naturally. So um, we'll, I don't anticipate any issues there at all because of that uh, strong focus we have on biosecurity. Brad Adams says far from harming the environment, the ranch has increased biodiversity in Flinders Bay even providing fisheries department researchers with an important link to the life cycle of the iconic West Australian dewfish. After about 12 months they're covered in seaweed and they're really starting to look like part of the environment. Fish have moved in, fish are starting to breed there. Um, I've noticed that Flinders Bay Rural Nursery area. Um, we're seeing juvenile pink snapper, juvenile deweys, there's lots of wrasse, there's big eye, there's um, big predatory fish cruising past, so it becomes a real interesting um, ecosystem where there wasn't that diversity there before because it was just sand and seagrass meadows. Um, so putting these reefs in there um, with the abalone on them, so we're not only getting the benefit of having an economic return from the abalone, but there's all these other things going on with the, the ecosystem developing around those reefs being there and it's, it's really exciting to watch. The abalone will be grown for three years on the habitats they're being harvested at a smaller size than the wild catch minimum and larger than the standard farm product. So we are able to fill that gap between 100 and 145 millimetres. There's none of that product available on the market. So it's going to be very interesting going forward, uh, being the only company uh, producing green in the world that can supply um, a totally different product into the market. So I think we'll be able to really um, leverage that uniqueness The first abalone harvested this year has been sold into the domestic market as snap frozen single serve units. Ultimately the goal will be to sell into Asia 
especially China, where there's likely to also be huge demand for a live product. Live's really where it's at. You can really increase um, your price return for live abalone into the market. And I think with the facility we'll have here and the fact that we can harvest only a couple of minutes away, put them into the live tanks, get them straight to Perth. There's direct flights into China now. Um, I think we'll be able to get, achieve very good returns for our product by getting them live into China. Market reaction to the product locally has been favourable. At the high-profile Lewin Estate Winery, chef Danny Angove says it's perfect for the growing Asian clientele visiting the Margaret River region. It's abalone cooked for um, four hours at 85 degrees, so the texture should be just beautiful. So we've got this, you know, beautiful products coming down here, and it's 40 minutes down the road, beautiful coast, beautiful waters, it's farmed, it's sustainable, it's good for us, they've got everything. So. Yeah, it's a good product for us. We, we probably won't take it off the menu, we'll keep it for a while. And this here is just a little bit of yuzu mayo. And then a little bit of uh, mandarin oil. From its initial production of 12 tonnes of abalone this year, the ranch is expecting to yield 60 tonnes next year and reach full capacity of 100 tonnes a year by 2018. Plans are already well underway for new farms at Esperance, 700 kilometres east of here, and at Port Lincoln in South Australia. So we're already running a trial in uh, Wally Bay in Esperance with a, a, a business partner down there who owns a couple of Abilone licences. Um, we're six months into that trial, it's promising results. Um, we're in the process of developing another trial in Port Lincoln. So basically when, before we go into a site to apply for a lease, we need to run um, our process for at least 12 months just to make sure that it's going to work because what we're doing no one's ever done before. Brad Adams believes sea ranching will secure the future for Australia's abalone industry, providing a low cost way of achieving premium prices in a growing market for sustainable ocean grown produce. This sea, sea ranching of abalone is going to drive future growth and future investment into the abalone business along the south coast because um, you know the cost of doing it on land is reasonably expensive, the product's not as good, uh, wild catch is limited by quota, so to drive future growth for the abalone business I, I really believe that uh, sea ranching is a great opportunity going forward for um, you know, some, some of these coastal communities.